Hey, welcome to Mondo and Friends presented by Verizon. My name is Mondo Fresco. Today we have whew, actress, producer, dancer, singer, entrepreneur. <laughs> I mean, you do it all. Emily Tosta is in here. Emily, how are you? Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm so honored to be here. I'm a huge fan of your show. I've Thank watched you. a bunch of your episodes, so I'm super happy. Thank to you. Be we're here. fans of yours. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and also the singer part is uh, my mom thinks I'm a singer. So Google has that, but that's my mom's thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> so your mom wrote that in your bio somewhere. <laughs> my, mom, my mom is, mi the, is the only person bien. in this world that, no, that thinks I'm a singer. <laughs> Me, me, can't me bien. Let me, let me add it in, in her, in her bio. No, that's awesome. Can you sing? I, I used to do musical theater for a there long time. There it is. Time, but I haven't sang in a while, so it's, it's so funny because it's all over the internet, and I'm like, man, I haven't sang in such a long time. Would you, would you, would you make music today, or do you? If I were to go back to musical theater, which is something that I loved because it's how I started. Yeah. I, I would be, I definitely would be open to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can see that. Yeah, you love music. Yeah, we've been talking about music for, <laughs> yeah, for that's true. before the mics open. So I want to talk about your your amazing career. You know, you're you're young and you've been blowing up. You've been busy. A lot of things going on in in your in your career now. Now I want to take it back to before you were on Mayans, before you were on Party of Five, before you <laughs> did movies, any of that. Okay. When you first fell in love with the art or the arts mm -hmm. and before you, you started acting, do you remember like that moment that you were like, I want to do this. I want to start acting. Oh, yeah, of course. I was born and raised in Dominican Republic. So I, I lived there with my mom, my two sisters and my dad. And when I was around seven years old, I had kind of a an interesting upbringing i had um kind of a rough childhood in a sense growing up in dr and just dealing with my my parents divorce and you know family troubles yeah. and as a kid you almost want to like find an outlet for yourself sometimes of something to like completely submerge yourself into to deal with your emotions and to sort of find yourself and that's what acting was for me mm. so when i was little i remember i started doing theater and i was like this is so great. I get to be other people and I, I don't have to deal with my own emotions. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's how I started. I started in my country. I started doing theater. Then I moved on to film and TV over there. I would do commercials. And then I actually had, which I don't think a lot of people know this, but I had this four hour live show every Saturday in my country as like a little girl where I would interview people, where I would like do segments. And it was just, it was hilarious. It was like little old me with a four hour live show in like the biggest network in my country that's and <laughs> crazy it's crazy what was the show called sábado chiquito so you know how they're sábado gigante yeah yeah we called it sábado chiquito was was sábado chiquito televised in other parts of the world it was just in dominican republic yeah so i just i developed such a passion for the arts and for entertaining people and then i started noticing like how much what we do can actually affect and influence others yeah and i always told myself like man, I want to do this in, in a bigger scale. Like, I feel like I want to do more than just Dominican Republic. And my country's industry at that time was so small. There was only so much you could do. So when I was 12, I told my mom, I was like, what if we just move to America? And I thought she was going to tell me I was crazy and out of my <laughs> mind. And like, no, you have to wait till you're 18. <laughs> but my mom was like, let's do it. My mom has been my rock for as long as I can remember. She's literally my best friend and my partner in crime in like anything that we do. Oh, I love that. So we decided to come to the States and that's how that's how that journey happened. And your mom is here on set right she now. She is. Shout so, out to mom. So shout out to <laughs> Mama Emilia mm -hmm. uh, here and, and, you know, supporting you. I think that's mm -hmm. that's a beautiful thing. You know, like we, we talk here on the show about... Uh, Growing up in in a you know me growing up in a in a traditional Mexican household, when I told my parents I wanted to get into entertainment, they were like, "No, you know, it's it's a trabajo. You of know, that's course. that's not a, a job or career that that they're familiar with. Mm -hmm. So from there, they just don't think it's a promising one. 
and and yes, of course, it's challenging, right? Like, mm -hmm. I mean, more than other traditional careers. So like, my parents were very like kind of anti, like, no, don't do that, you know. Yeah. So to hear, I love hearing when uh, other parents are very supportive mm -hmm. of, yeah, you know, like your mom moving here, your mom supporting, your mom being here on set. Like, I think yeah. that's beautiful, you know. I mean, my mom would be here on set, but she shouldn't. She would annoy everyone on set, <laughs> right? Just, but uh, I love her to death. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I think that's that's so cool that that you have a supportive family, yeah. and and family because your 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 sisters are all yes. into it. Your your sisters is now. I, I just found out right that yeah. she's uh, she moved to to LA with you. My sister Carla, which is I have two sisters, Carla and Gabby. Today's Gabby's birthday, so happy birthday to happy Gabby. Happy birthday, Gabby. But Carla moved to LA, so now I have my mom. I'm so blessed to have my mom and sister with me out here. But yeah, my mom has been my biggest rock and and without her, I wouldn't have been able to come to this country at that age. I mean, I was 12 years old, so we had no papers. We didn't speak English like we it was a culture shock. It was just such a journey for us. So I'm happy that we got to do it together. What do you remember about that? That first time, that first, let's say, week of, of being mm -hmm. in the States? I was so lost and confused. <laughs> I was like, first of all, everyone speaks English. So that alone was completely mind blowing to yeah. me. Then I remember when I came to the US, I went to eighth grade. I was in eighth grade and going to school here was a complete culture shock. First of all, people got to wear clothes in school. Like that's not something we do in my country. People had to switch from class to class. That's not something we do. I just remember staying there and seeing everybody walking around and I'm like, where is everybody going? I was like, <laughs> where is everybody going to? I have to go to another class. I was late to all my classes. I had a rolly backpack. I was that embarrassing kid with a rolly oh, yeah, backpack yeah, 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 that yeah. everyone made fun of. <laughs> It was just... Did they um, kick your backpack around? It was every... They kicked me around. <laughs> <laughs> it was just... It was hilarious. Like, I, it was really, really an interesting experience for me going to school in America for the first time. But I was... Just to tell you, I was homeschooled for the rest of it after that. Oh, really? Like, I'm done with this. I'm going to be homeschooled. How long did you, did you last in, in... I went to school only for eighth grade. I oh, only oh, lasted grade. one year. And then I was homeschooled. But again, that, that's like the, the family support. That's your, your mom's yeah, support. She's yeah. like, okay, it's mm -hmm. not for you. We'll try something else. Absolutely. You know? That's exactly what it was. My parents would be like, está loco. Vas a ir. No, that's, that's super cool. So you you were homeschooled. Yeah. And I'm sure I lived in Miami. So I moved to Miami first because my sister Carla and her husband lived there. So we went to go crash with them for the first like three years of us living in this country. You, so I'm sure that helped with the career too, being homeschooled? It definitely yeah. did. I feel like I had, of course, more time to just like do what I wanted to do. Yeah. And I could go to auditions. I could focus on working and acting. So it was definitely helpful being homeschooled for sure. And also like your English, right? Like you, how, how soon did you learn the language? So I, I have always watched a lot of American television from my country just with subtitles, but I think that was really helpful. And I love reading. I was always the kid that was like, my head was buried behind a book my entire childhood. So I would read a lot in English, even if I didn't know what the heck I was reading. Yeah. <laughs> I just would read in English because I feel like our brains, especially at that age, it's a little bit easier to pick up on things. Yeah. So I, I would read a lot. I would go to Barnes & Noble and like spend after because we didn't have any money, so I couldn't even buy books. So I would just spend yeah. like whole entire <laughs> afternoons at Barnes & Noble like reading. <laughs> they probably thought I had no home. And then, <laughs> but yeah, I, I submerged myself into like the arts and, and that helped so much with my English. And obviously going to school too. Did you learn? I mean, did you speak Eng uh, English in, in DR? No, 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 I didn't. No. Man. Mm -hmm. All right. Now I'm going to, I'm going to go back to Sabado Chiquito. Yes. Because I think that's amazing. <laughs> so you, you have this show, this four hour show, uh, inspired by one of the biggest, you know, ongoing shows. Mm -hmm. I think he, Don Francisco did like 50 Don plus Francisco, years. Yes, absolutely. 50 plus years uh, of that show. And then you, you have this sh show called Sabado Heat. Sabado, Sabado Chiquito, Chiquito, which is translates to s little Saturday. Little Saturday. Wow. <laughs> and so you're, you're on the show. And what do you remember about that? 
I just remember I learned all of my discipline from that show. <laughs> Having a four-hour live show is insanity. <laughs> yeah. It's like anything can happen in the middle of it. Like I learned all of my improv skills from there. I just, it was a huge learning experience on like how to act quick, how, how to you think then? fast. I must have been anywhere between like nine and 11, I want to say. Wow. Yeah. It wow. was just, it, it taught me a lot of discipline. I, it was, it was amazing though. Cause I, I got to express myself so much and, and I really like, I honestly found myself through that show because I found, I, I found out about my interests, my likes, my dislikes when I was so young and it, it truly shaped me. And it's interesting cause I feel like I don't think about it as often. Like this is probably the first time I've actually sat down to even talk about it. Yeah. 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 Do you have any footage yes, of that? Yes, we do. definitely have footage oh, of that. Oh man, you have to I'm send gonna me. Send you you some. have to send me footage <laughs> of that. I'm going to send you some for sure. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Don Francisco, I, I, we, you know, we grew up watching it. Um, and I remember he would have these very like young kids on the show and, you know, they're really like bright and, and quick and witty. Mm -hmm. I can imagine, you know, that, that was, that was you on there. Yeah, it was, it was so much fun. I remember I, I was a huge Jonas Brothers fan. And <laughs> when the Jonas Brothers came to my country, I got to interview them through the show. Wow. And yeah, it was, it was just hilarious. It was, and I remember I was like practicing what to say in English. I kept like practicing it every day, like my two questions that I had to say <laughs> to them. <laughs> so, okay. So let me add host to your bio. <laughs> so you're, you were hosting, you were like in the entertainment industry, like mm -hmm. full on early, theater. early on. And uh, so then you decide that you wanted to act. You go from Miami at 12 years old, you come to, to Los Angeles. To Miami first at 12. At 12. Yeah. And, uh -huh. and, oh, and then you moved to LA. Yeah. But th this was like, 2014 or something like that it must have been because i'm i'm 24 about to, i'm gonna be 25 in like two months i came here when i was 12 and then i came to la when i was 15 so, oh, okay. so i've been in la for almost wow almost 10 years now so angelina yeah. now yeah anything past five years you know you're yeah, that's home you're, huh you're, yeah 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 that's home for sure <laughs> yeah. so you you come to LA mm -hmm. and was that a culture shock for you? It definitely was. I when I was in Miami, I was doing a lot of things in the Spanish market and I was doing a lot of novelas and I was doing like web series and I still felt that same feeling that I felt in my country of like I want more. I feel like there's more that I want to do. There's so much more reach that I want to like be able to have. And that's when I, I told my mom, I was like, what if we move to L.A.? The same thing again. <laughs> and my mom posted on Facebook. She was like, do we have any family members in L.A. from like our long extended Latin family? And it was like a third cousin or something like that out of nowhere. We just said, and he's like, yeah, I live in L.A. And back then we didn't think to FaceTime him. We didn't think to easily could have been a serial killer yeah. is now one of the most incredible people and the closest people to us literally the sole reason why i'm even here in la he wow. allowed us to crash in his library had never met before and him and tracy which is his wife and the girls they have two beautiful daughters and it was insane like family again helped us out without even knowing us and that was so beautiful because we were able to crash in his library for like the first year and a half of living here until we got up on our feet That's and I beautiful. started working and yeah that was another another journey again <laughs> so you spent your time at Barnes and Noble and then you <laughs> end up moving into a library <laughs> wow look at that you know? connection <laughs> it was it was <laughs> like I manifested it, was, it it was written yeah it was written uh mm -hmm. so you get into acting now mm -hmm. and you know you're you, what are you what are you thinking now like are you thinking i gotta be on on a, on a show or i gotta book a movie or mm -hmm. like what what does what does that look for you internally now that you're in right. the business right so when i came to la i i always acting has always been my passion it's always may, been what makes me happy it's always been like my outlet it's always been what i love the most in this entire world but when i came to la i noticed it's a business it's a lot more than just my passion now. It's a lot more than me just loving something. Mm. So now I also have to be a businesswoman at 15 because this is a business and it is very hard out here. So it definitely shifted my perspective a little bit in that aspect because I would just show up to auditions happy and wanting to do what I wanted to do. And like, I'm just going to go into the room and like have fun. Yeah. And then 
although that is a beautiful perspective to have at the same time, like it is a business and there's a lot of things that were very tough to learn. There's a lot of things that were very tough with my own self journey, like coming to LA and being in LA for those first, I would say like three years of living here is when I, I had the roughest times with my mental health and myself and like discovering myself as a woman, discovering myself as a young woman in the entertainment industry. Yeah. I would go into rooms and like people would pick on me for my accent. People would pick on me for my body type. People would pick on me for having a baby face, but having like a curvy Latin body that I just, that's who I am, you yeah, know? Yeah, I can totally relate and to that. Yeah, and it's just like... <laughs> I can't. Not me saying yeah. <laughs> Not me saying yeah. <laughs> it happens. It happens. It's not our fault. <laughs> it's not our fault, right? It's genetics. <laughs> and then, yeah, it was just, it was like really rough. And at the end of the day, like I, I was young. Some of these things started getting to me. Some of these things started getting to my head. And I, I had a rough time with myself where like I had to really reshape my own self-value and yeah. my own self-worth. And, and that took a long time. You know, it's in, in, at this time, you're, you're still a teenager, right? Yeah, 15, 16, 17. How did you deal with that internally? Who was was helping you? Were you doing, you know, therapy? Were you talking to family? Like how how were you going through that? I actually used to, which is something that I've been, I'm a huge believer in therapy. I, I've been going to therapy for a long time. Throughout that time, I couldn't afford to go to therapy because I had no money. And the money that I had was like, we had to pay rent. We had to get food. Like we had to eat. So I didn't have money to go yeah. to therapy. So I, I had to almost deal with things on, on my own. Now I go to therapy every week. My therapist is my best friend. <laughs> I hit that girl up like, girl, listen to what happened to me yesterday. <laughs> So I am a huge believer in therapy, but at, at that time, I, I just didn't have those resources and I didn't have that outlet to yeah. be able to go to therapy. So I, I had to deal with it on my own. I had to find myself. I had to build a morning routine for myself to center myself before I had to tackle the rest of the day and the people in the day. Like having my mom was a huge strength for me, but meditation, I started meditating and I started discovering meditation and like I guess strengthening my relationship with God and my faith was also really helpful, reading a lot, but it, it was a journey for sure. For someone that doesn't know where to start with meditation, mm -hmm. how would you, one, describe it, and then, you know, two, why would you recommend it? I would say that meditation for me was the only time where I could feel like I'm quieting my brain. And even on, in the times where you're not really quieting your brain, at least you're self-aware of what's going on in your brain. To me, breathing has been such a powerful technique for me as, as an artist as well as a creative, but also just for my own sanity. Like I feel like meditating every single morning sets the tone for my day and it's like time for myself. And I think meditation and prayer also go hand in hand for me at least. I think that in the Bible it says like quiet time with God, like quieting your brain, like that's, that's meditation. Prayer and meditation can go hand in hand. So I, I think sometimes there's this idea that like meditation and, and religion have to have some sort of like interconnection, but I don't think so. I think that anybody can meditate and it's just sitting with yourself, sitting with your thoughts and like having time to be with you. And that self time is so important, especially if you do it in the beginning of the day. Yeah. You know, I, I do mindfulness because yeah. it, I, I get, I, I get anxiety from time to time. I mean, sometimes I anxiety or I feel depressed. Um, and and I'm a very active guy. I'm, my mind's always going like 100 miles per hour. So sometimes when I'm sitting or I'm just laying down in bed, my mind's still moving, you know, even though I'm not physically. And mindfulness, and, and, and I'm breaking this down for, for those that don't know what of mindfulness course. is. So for, for me, um, you know, I just, I just take a, a moment to ground myself. And, you know, whether it's it's I breathe and and I'm listening to the sounds that are around me. Right. Um, not ignoring them. I'm not I'm not trying to, like, get into the Zen moment where I'm blocking out like a car that's passing by. Like, I'm OK. I, can, I hear the car. I hear the fan. You know, maybe I hear the TV. I hear the bird. But I'm so now I'm focusing on that in the in that moment as opposed to like my thoughts yeah. right and that calms me down so like so mindfulness powerful. helps me out a lot too that's beautiful yeah and, and i think that 
breathing is so powerful. And I know it sounds so simple because it's something we do unconsciously, <laughs> but breathing is so powerful. Like it's, it's oxygen that we need in our brains and in our bodies. And it's like just sitting there and like breathing is so powerful. And when you meditate and breathe, like that can really ground you. That's so funny you say that. And I looked at, at, at my uh, director, Fred, because um, breathing, I had, I was nearly dying like three weeks ago. You and I were talking. Oh, wait, yes, actually, we're talking. I did know this. <laughs> and uh, I, I really, I, w I mean, I was really going through it. Emily, I, at one point, and you say breathing, so I have asthma, right? Yeah. So whatever virus that, that hit me, hit my respiratory system mm -hmm. bad and, and triggered my asthma. Of course. And I was in bed, literally in bed for two weeks and I didn't do anything. And again, you're talking, you're talking about, I'm talking to you about, me, I'm always going at 100 miles per hour, right? So like I had to completely stop and slow down. Um, and not because I wanted to, but because I didn't have any other choice. And, uh, you know, again, going back to breathing, you know, we think, we don't even think about breathing. Mm -mm. Breathing is such a, it's an innate behavior. It's something that we, our bodies just naturally do. Yeah. You know, the minute, the minute we, we come out of the womb. Mm -hmm. And just to think that um, I had to literally focus on breathing and not to meditate and not to like, you know, to, to, to do mindfulness, keep yourself but to, alive. <laughs> to, to, to live, yeah. um, it's deep. Mm -hmm. Like it really messes with your head, you know, and, 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 and I'm going to be very transparent. Like I really thought, am I going to come out of this? and be nor breathe normal be able to breathe normally again mm -hmm. and that's how tough it got and 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 I, i've heard you say this um we forget how fragile life truly is yeah. mm -hmm. you had an experience where Ooh, yeah <laughs> you you realize that mm -hmm. um you know we don't have to go too deep into it yeah. but i would love to hear your perspective the change of perspective in life after you going through that. Of course. I it resonated a lot when you just said like that you're always going a thousand miles an hour and this that just happened to you two weeks ago was like your body literally telling you like slow the heck down. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes you don't realize it's like our body sending us messages of like slow down. And that's kind of the same thing that happened to me. This was right before COVID shut down the country. So 2020, we got shut down early 2020, right? March, yeah. Yeah. So I was going a thousand miles an hour, more, a million miles an hour. I <laughs> hey, was, this isn't a race, okay? Was, <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> um, and I, I was shooting Mayans. I was shooting Party of Five at the same time. I would go from one set to the other. I would, thankfully, they were both in Santa Clarita. So God blessed me with five minutes away from each other so I could do both Amazing. shows. And then I, I finished and then I went to Atlanta to go film a movie, with, which was my first film with Nicolas Cage. And I was just like working back to back to back to back. And I was ignoring myself. I was ignoring symptoms that I was having. I was ignoring things that were coming up in my body because in my mind, I was like, I have to work. I have to work. Like I have this momentum right now. I can't let it. It has to continue building up. And I forgot about me. I forgot about my health. I forgot about my mental health, my physical health. And then COVID came and the whole country shut down and my body also shut down. I literally passed out, like my body completely gave out on me yeah. and I couldn't speak. I couldn't walk. I couldn't talk. I couldn't anything. It was like the scariest thing in my entire life. Um, they took me to the hospital and I was hospitalized for a month and a half. And I, wow. I like my, I got diagnosed with an autoimmune disease and my body was like not responding to any of the medication. It wasn't responding to anything that the doctors were saying. And when you see doctors starting to get worried and doctors starting to say, we don't know what else to do, that's when you're like, wait a minute, because you're supposed to save my life. So yeah. if you don't save my life, who the heck is going to save my life? Yeah, when they're scratching their heads. <laughs> I know, like... I'm like, well, if you guys are confused and lost, I'm, uh, I'm a little bit worried here. Yeah. I laugh about it now, but that was like the most traumatizing time of my entire life. Like I had something different in my body shutting down every single day. There was a time where I like fully like kind of flatlined for a while and wow. then came back and like 
it was just a lot. I had like feeding tubes, like because I couldn't eat, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't even stand up. I came out of the hospital weighing like 85 pounds. I had to learn how to walk again. I had to learn how to like be a human again. And it was insane. And it was COVID, so I couldn't have visitors. So my mom would sneak into the hospital. (laughs) And that was another, <laughs> a whole another journey. Cause, that's a, that's, that's yeah, amazing. My mom would sneak into the hospital, which is crazy because the one time that I like stopped breathing, my mom was there and wow. she was the one that like called for nurses. And yeah, it was just, it was being, going through something like that makes you so aware of so many things that you don't realize you're not aware of. And it just gave me like a brand new meaning of life and a brand new meaning of taking care of yourself. Mm-hmm. And it, it brought everything back to the surface of like, what are the things that I need to go within to yeah. take care of myself? Like, why is this happening to me? I always think that God has a plan for everything and everything happens for a reason, even the bad things. And as much as we're, while we're going through them, we're like, why is this happening to me? Like, why me out of all people, you know? Yeah. But everything has a purpose and everything is a learning lesson. Even if you don't realize it in that moment, you're going to realize it later on. But I think for me, that was like a huge awakening moment. And it, it's like what you said, like life is so fragile. We have to take care of ourselves. Our, our health, sometimes we tend to ignore it. And I think this whole COVID thing really brought that into the surface for a lot of us yeah. too. The importance of health, the importance of family, of loved ones, of of self. And that was something that that experience brought for me for sure. Yeah. What what do you remember your 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 mom you know, telling you throughout this, this time? She was like really trying to stay strong for me. And at at the same time, I was on so much medication that there's a lot of things that, which is actually something I'm working through in therapy now. You know that sometimes when traumatizing things happen to us, we like almost block them. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of things from like childhood trauma or or trauma that we hold in our bodies that we kind of block and shut down and like push to the back of our brains. So I'm actually working on that now in therapy, unpacking those moments from the hospital, unpacking those moments from like going through a near death experience and and just kind of understanding like what does that mean to me and, and how I can heal that and so I can move on from it. Cause sometimes we hold on to things and we don't realize that we're holding on to them. Yeah, no, that's 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 beautiful to it's 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 like bittersweet, right? Like mm-hmm. it's it's a beautiful um change of perspective and it might not even be a change of perspective because maybe like for me my my therapist shared with me that um i'm the most grateful person she's ever met i love that (laughs) and uh so like you know i didn't need to be more grateful god i don't know why you Got me sick. It's like, damn, no, no. <laughs> I thought you had my back, man. What's up? I thought, I thought we had a good relationship. <laughs> yeah, I thought we were cool, man. I know. I thought you were my homie. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, like, that made me even even more grateful for, like, the littlest things, you know. And breathing. Like, mm-hmm. breathing is, is, is I, I, I don't know. It's, 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 it's so deep, you know, because mm-hmm. we, we get caught up in, in, in the business. We get ca- caught up in the career. We get caught up in um family you know we get caught up in friends we get caught up in like the smallest thing right like oh man couldn't get a car wash today you know yeah. like uh but life is is so much more than than that you know than getting caught up in in the day to day like just being able to again breathe just being able to um be alive mm-hmm. you know and 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 have health it's it, it, health really is is wealth as Ooh, they say health is really wealth and and it's also like i love what you said about we get caught up in so many things like we get caught up in in our day to days and we just have to sort of take a step back and something that i've been working through a lot that is something i tell myself every day can i change this right now mm-hmm. and if i can't change this right now then why am i going to spend time stressing about it And that's how I've been approaching things. It's like, okay, this huge worry and concern that I have at the moment, am I able to do something about it? If I am, then let me do something about it, fix it, and that's it, move on. But if I can't, then I need to let it go. Yeah. Because sometimes we hold on to things and it's like, why are we so worried about this if we can't even change it? Like we can't, if we can't change something, then why are you so stressed about it? And and even that small little change of perspective in my life has been super helpful with how I tackle things. And at the same time, the importance of mental health, like the importance of pouring into myself. I used to almost be like ashamed of self-time 
Like I used to be like, no, I have to be working. I have to be doing something. Like I have to be hustling. And I didn't realize the importance of rest above hustling. And rest is equally as important as you going out there and working your booty off. Yeah. And it's like, once I realized that, I was like, balance is so important in my life. And it's really brought me the most fulfilling, like th that's the most fulfilled I feel when I actually take time to also pour into myself and just loving myself. Like even something as simple as taking the Sunday for me and taking a bath and watering my plants and meditating and sitting in prayer and hanging out with loved ones, like stuff that I used to feel almost guilty for doing before because I wasn't working. Now enjoying those moments and seeing how important that actually is for me. Yeah. You know, I, I also, I mean, for me personally, my, my family, my father is, is a, is a hard worker. You know, I feel like that was, that was good. And, and, and it was also bad to see because, um, good because, you know, I'm, I've, learn from him to to work hard and and you know hard work pays off but at the same time i feel like that i feel the pressures of 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 i, I think the pressures of, of working hard or, or the 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 thought of having to work hard every single day comes from that you know um but but like you i've i've been doing the work um you know the personal work and and uh, I, I take some, some days off or, you know, I, I take, I haven't been successful lately guys, but I've, <laughs> I take some, some days they're off. They're over there and... like days off. Wait, what? <laughs> when do we take days off? What are you talking about days off? <laughs> they all looked at me like. <laughs> I just, I felt the glare. <laughs> no, I, I felt as soon it as too. you said days off, I felt the glare. That's why I had to look over like, hey, ease up on, ease up, ease up on <laughs> No, you know, and and but I I, I have um, and I've learned that through through therapy as well. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, there's it's funny because one of the things that that I I did up until recently is mm -hmm. I have my to do list, right? And I have all right, I'm gonna check this off and this off and this off. And Emily, sometimes I get I used to up until a couple months ago, I would get really upset with myself if I didn't check off like mm -hmm. one thing that I was like. Oh man, I had to, I had to get that done. I, oh, I'm so mad I didn't get that done. And now, um, and I've shared this with, with, uh, Tatiana on, on our team. And I told her, you know what? I'm not, I'm not going to stress out about that anymore. You know, I'm, I, again, I'm grateful for the things that I did get to, mm -hmm. and I'm going to celebrate that for me. I'm not going to, um, be upset or be angry with myself because I didn't get to the last two, three or, or 10 things, you know, even if I get one thing done and didn't At get least 10, you got that one thing done, right. I got that one thing done, but that's, that's, that's something that I've had to personally learn mm -hmm. myself. That's beautiful. That's, that's beautiful that you've learned that it's almost like that analogy that everybody always says of like the glass half full as opposed to the glass half empty. Right. It's like you have to look at the good things in life. It's like, okay, I had a really bad day today, but what were those moments of gratitude? I got to wake up today. There's people that didn't get to wake up today. I have two legs that I'm able to walk and like simple things that you don't realize that other people don't have and, and we take for granted. So sometimes sitting there and just even writing, like I do this thing every single morning, gratitude journaling. Every morning without a fault, I write at least three things that I'm grateful for that day. Even if it's just me saying the birds outside, like anything as simple as that. And just starting your day in that gratitude frequency, I think really sets you up for the rest of your day. But it, it's that, it's having gratitude is so important. Tell me about, you know, your, your journaling. Do you sometimes, sit down and just write for for a good amount of time and sometimes you just write like three words like how, how does that go for you it's both actually uh there's this book i don't know if you've heard of it called the artist's way and it's a beautiful book if you haven't heard of it i recommend that you read it as a creative and it's it sort of like brings you through this journey of creativity and spirituality and how they go hand in hand and one of the things that they encourage you to do is, is I guess, free writing journaling. Mm. And they do, you're like doing challenges as you're reading the book. So they'll tell you the challenge for this week is so-and-so. So one of the challenges was something called like free writing in the mornings where mm. you wake up and you just write like three pages of whatever nonsense is coming out of your brain. 
And when I tell you <laughs> the amount of things I have found out about myself doing that, <laughs> <laughs> and I just discovered like the power in writing also. Writing is so powerful. Journaling is so powerful. Putting your thoughts out onto paper, it's almost like an outlet of like, mm. I'm, I'm taking this out of my body, literally physically and energetically, taking it out, putting it on paper and getting rid of it. And it's like out. When I was in the hospital, I wrote letters to everyone in my life that either hurt me or where I felt like I had a really traumatizing experience with them or anybody that was involved in anything that was traumatic for me in my childhood and in my early teenage years, I wrote letters to each person. And I kid you not, that was so freeing and so powerful because even though I never sent those letters, yeah. it was so powerful for myself to get that out onto writing. And I burned them. I burned them. And it, it felt like that trauma was like out of me, out of my body. And it's like, I just let it go. And I, I writing is such a powerful tool for me now. Yeah. No, mm -hmm. thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Something that, that I, uh, something that I do is, is I use the notes on my phone. On your phone. Yes. And I just like write right away. And, and, and sometimes it's, it is like, um, you know, a thought sometimes mm -hmm. it's a, it's a pretty lengthy, you know, um, the declaration of independence. Right. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I, I signed my, 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 uh, John Hancock at the end and, and yeah. send it away, you know? Um, yeah, it, 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 it really does help. There is, there is power behind yeah. that. And, uh, you know, sometimes it, it's, it's, it's therapeutic as well. It's so therapeutic. It's very freeing. Um, when it comes to your, your mental health, um, do you find it being like a priority now more than ever in your life? And and, and do you think it the pandemic had anything to do with it? It for sure yeah. did. I think that what happened to me also during the pandemic with my health and having to go through that experience, as well as just seeing the whole country shut down and how everyone now had to be home. We were forced to pour into ourselves. We were forced to pour into our, our, our the people that were married, like their marriages, our relationships, our family. Like we were literally forced to pour into us. And I hope that that's not something that we lose now, <clears throat> that we're sort of back into reality and sort of back into like the normal day to day. I just hope that people can hold on to that because I feel like as human beings, we move on from things so fast and we forget about periods of our time like those, I just hope that people can really take with them the importance of stillness, the importance of grounding yourself, the importance of pouring into you now that life is quote unquote back to normal. Right, right. Do, do you do you feel yourself ever pouring out of an empty cup or is that something that, that you don't do as, as much? That's something I used to do yeah. all the time before. I, I would always pour into others and forget about me. And I, I always thought that taking care of myself first was selfish. And yeah. I would always associate the word selfish with so much toxicity and negativity. But I have learned in the past two years, I would say, that, and I always use this, you know, when you're on an airplane mm -hmm. and you have your kid next to you. They always tell you, put the mask on yourself first before you put it on your kid. And it's like, that's what we need to do in life. Yeah. If I'm not breathing properly, my kid is not going to be able to breathe properly. If I'm not breathing properly, I'm not going to be able to pour into other people's cups. So I, I want to make sure that my cup is full first. And that's not a selfish thing to do. Pouring into yourself and taking care of yourself is not a selfish thing to do. And continuing to like tell myself that every single day has been really helpful. Yeah, and I think it's important to, to not just to know that, but to also like express it, and 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 not just I mean not not have, you don't have to be loud about it, but like mm -hmm. express it with your family and friends as well. You know, you don't have to like say, "Hey, today I'm taking some me time." Right. Okay, you leave like, me alone. Like yeah, you don't have to be all aggressive about that. it, but but it's mm -hmm. but just just say, "Hey, you know, today I'm 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 gonna rest. I'm gonna I'm gonna take it easy." You mm -hmm. know and um creating boundaries boundaries that's what it is it's creating boundaries key. that has been key i used to be a person that had no boundaries i would let people walk all over me i would be in, in toxic relationships for longer than i should be toxic friendships i would just be so quiet and keep things to myself and it was all like 
bottling up inside of me. And, and I finally learned to create boundaries. It's such an easy word, but it's such a hard thing to do sometimes. <laughs> yeah. But creating boundaries with your loved ones. And I also noticed that once I started creating boundaries, like, oh my God, you have no idea how many people left my life that had to leave my life. Because yeah. the people that are meant to be in your life and the people that really love and care and respect for you are going to respect your boundaries. For sure. And once I understood that and sort of let go of that fear of like, what are others going to think about me if I give them my boundaries, mm -hmm. it was such a freeing feeling. Yeah, no, I, 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 I've learned that as well through, through, uh, through my work is, mm -hmm. is, uh, is boundaries are, are key boundaries mm -hmm. and you know um it's it's just you putting your foot down mm -hmm. you know whether it's 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 a hard put you know put down or a gentle putting your foot down but it's putting your foot down and, and just letting people know you know where you stand and 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 that respect for, is key and yeah. like you know among other things that that are, are vital for you um and, and your well-being and uh and and for the sake of the relationship that you guys have too i think that's that's important. Absolutely. Um, yeah, you're you're in like therapy. <laughs> uh, you're like in the advanced levels over there. You're <laughs> you're pro. You're pro levels already. How long have you been doing therapy for? Uh, so I started doing therapy when I was very little in my country because I would go to therapy to sort of deal with like so my parents and stuff. So you would get off from Sábado Chiquito <laughs> and then you go do therapy. <laughs> go to therapy. <laughs> that was my first introduction to therapy, but I only did it for like a couple of months. I was like, I don't know what this is. I'm so young. I'm just sitting here talking to the stranger. I'm like, I can barely talk to myself. Like, <laughs> I can't do this, mom. <laughs> And then as in my adulthood, once I started being more financially stable, I was like, I'm going to do therapy again and I'm going to give it a try in my own terms. And now as an adult and yeah, I've been doing it for like two, two and a half years now. Um, no, maybe three. I would say like almost nice. three years. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. Nice. I, I love to uh, talk about, you know, the 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 beauty that is Latinidad. Right. And and how you are so proud of of being Latina. Uh, I know your your IG captions are some of them are in Spanish. <laughs> yes. What's what's behind that? I, I've always felt so strongly about representing my culture when I was a little girl in Dominican Republic wanting to be an actress. The reason why I didn't think I could do it was because I never saw anybody that looked like me on screen. And I remember the exact moment when that shifted for me and how empowering that feeling was for me. It was seeing America Ferreira in Ugly Betty. Mm. And once I saw somebody that looked like me on screen, I was like, oh my God, I can do this. And it's been so important for me to carry that feeling throughout the rest of my career so that I can inspire other little girls that think they can't do it because they don't see themselves on screen to know that, yes, you can do it. And it is possible yeah. because there is a group of us doing it. Even if it's not what's most prominent in our industry right now, there is a group of us doing it and you can do it too. And I think that's why it's so important for me to like be so proud of my roots, so proud of where I come from, especially because it was picked on for so long here. It was like put down for so long that I almost felt ashamed of it. I felt ashamed of where I came from. I felt ashamed of like my language and, and, once I realized, like, this is what makes me me. This is my superpower. This is all of our freaking superpowers. It's like us being Latin, our roots, our music, our food, our culture is so beautiful and so rich. This is our goddamn superpower. Yep. So why are we ashamed of it? Like, we have to stand tall and stand proud of where we come from. And I want to carry that for the rest of my life. And I want my kids to carry that and the kids of my kids and... And it's just, it's beautiful. I love being Dominican. I love being Venezuelan. I love being Latin. And I'm going to stand by it and represent it in our industry forever. I love that. I love that. And you, and you do it so well. You do it Thank so, you. so well. And, you know, I, I think that the the youth, and in, in, like you said, that are, are into, whether it's it's a show that you're in or a yeah. film, um, or just follow you on, on social, you know, you, you're a great role model. Uh, for for that, and it's important. It's important for us also to have the conversations, the type of conversations that you and I are having, you know, today are important because you know it's it's one thing to to see you on on a screen. It's one thing to to see you doing your craft. Uh, it's another thing to to also see the importance of of taking care of your yourself physically and mentally. Um, it's 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 huge. You know, it's something that I didn't grow up 
watching. I didn't grow up listening, you know, like sure. I, I grew up in, in, in hip hop, right? Like I grew up in, you know, listening to, to my favorite artists, but like I never heard any of my favorite artists talking about, you know, um, taking care of their mental health, you know, taking care of themselves. Taking, you know, it was, it was all the, the opposite actually. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like co- the complete opposite. <laughs> and, the complete opposite. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I think that the way that we are now doing things differently, um, and, and breaking cycles, um, breaking is generational cycles is, is, is beautiful. And, and, you know, for, to have someone like you in in the uh, and and have your the, the platform that you have and, and use it the way that you do, I think it's it's amazing. And you should Thank be very you. very proud of yourself. Thank you. And um, then same with you. I mean, this this is like a safe space where we are able to do stuff like that. Like this is somewhere where we can come as artists, as creatives, to discuss those topics that matter. So it also it starts with you for creating the space that is so needed in our in our platforms. So thank you for having this space for people and for holding it. Thank you. Thank mm-hmm. you. Thank you. I want to talk about your uh your foundation. You have a foundation oh, yeah. as well. Yeah. You know, I do. and uh so you, you help families in, in Venezuela, mm-hmm. correct? Yeah. Uh tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. So my mom and I have always volunteered since I was little. That was like one of our favorite things to do together. And I think it also always kept me really grateful because I think when you volunteer and especially when I've done it out here in L.A., there's so much homelessness and and there's so much poverty in so many places that you wouldn't even realize what's going on in half of these places. And once you're like aware of it, it, it really brings like that moment of gratitude. I still do it. I still volunteer every weekend whenever I have a chance. But it's always been very instilled in me since I was a little girl to use my platform and my audience to help the world, in a sense. And my mom and I, my mom's Venezuelan. So I was born in the Dominican Republic. My mom's Venezuelan. So I'm like half and half. And Venezuela is going through like an insane social crisis, economic crisis, political crisis, where there's hundreds of people dying every single day. And there's people that kids and and adults and pregnant women and so many people that don't even have the basic necessities of food and water and access to medicine and access to clothing for their babies. And once I started seeing and realizing how many people were lacking so much over there that we have so much of over here, I was like, there's something we we should be able to do about this. So my mom and I and my sister Carla, the foundation is called Cartos International. My sister's name is Carla Tosta. So Cartos comes from my sister Carla. Love that. And yeah, we basically built this organization where we pick a city every month in which to bring things that they need to. And throughout the past couple of years, we've been able to build an incredible network of people that have been helping. We have a shipping company called Olarte Transport that they allow us to bring everything over to Venezuela, which was like the biggest conflict we had to begin with. And we're able to bring food and clothing. And we now have been able to host food banks there where we can feed people. And yeah, we we wow. work with orphanages and elderly centers and even hospitals that we've been able to bring medicine to. It's just, it's been so fulfilling. And every month it's growing more and more. Every month there's thousands of people we're helping. It went from like 10 people to 20 people to hundreds of people to now thousands of people. So it's it's been so fruitful and amazing. That's amazing. That's 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 such a beautiful thing, and and I'm sure that you guys are just scratching the surface with the amount of things that yeah. that you will be able to to do for them and and, and help them out. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think it's amazing what you do with uh, your vegan goods too. Now you're <laughs> you're so you you give back. You have the entrepreneurial side of mm-hmm. you, but you're not doing leather. You're doing vegan. Yes. So tell me about that. Of course. So my sister Gabby has a company called Gaia Room. And we've always wanted to do something together. We've always wanted to um, sort of like bring empowerment to women in a way where, where they feel beautiful, where they can feel sexy. And we we made this line and yeah, it's called Gaia Room. And we have vegan leather bags because I, I wanted to still do something that felt ethical and that felt aligned with like the things that I believe in. And we we outsource our leather from from different places in the world and, and it's vegan and it feels just like real leather. 
and and it's been amazing. It's been like a family business and we've been able to do it. And now my sister is putting up our first store in Dominican Republic, physical store, amazing. which is incredible. Yeah. So it's, it's lovely. I, I feel like that's what I've always wanted. I've always wanted to just work. I have such incredible women in my family and we have such a powerful, strong lineage of women that are so smart and so creative. And my dream has always been to use like my resources and my outlets to be able to sort of like bring everyone on and yeah. like, we can, we can do this together. And, and, and that's what it. I've been able to do. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. That's so, so cool. So if someone wants to to purchase your, your, your vegan goods, vegan bags, clutches, like where can they get that? Gaiaroom.com. Yeah. There. So Gaiaroom.com. G-A-I-A room.com. Nice. And, G-A-I-A room .com. Nice. and, yeah. and just briefly going back to the uh the foundation where can they mm -hmm. get more information on on that so we have an instagram account cartos international so k-a-r-t-t-o-s international and you'll be able to know there what we're doing or there's also volunteering opportunities that we're always putting out there if anybody wants to like come be more hands-on with us and yeah you can see what we do there awesome and hands-on mm -hmm. like is that something they can do here in, yeah, in, here in, in los angeles yeah so we're wow. always like putting we're always sort of like pre-pandemic, it was a little bit easier to do events and, and hosting activities and things that people could come do. But now it's more so just like we at the shipping center, we all pack things up together. Like my friends will come or I'll have like even Emilio has been able to like come and like share like so many of my castmates and so many people have been able to help and, and give their time. And it's been amazing. I feel so blessed and lucky to know so many incredible people that have given so much of themselves to a better cause. So, yeah, we always have those opportunities going around. So if, if anybody wants to come, like, hang out and, and do something good for the world, they can. That's amazing. What does Emilio say? Hey, carnal. <laughs> hey, carnal. Give me a neighbor, hey, carnal. Hey, carnal. <laughs> I'm one of those, carnal. Hey, hey carnal. <laughs> we gotta send him a video saying that. <laughs> okay. Let's edit this out so he doesn't beat me up, right? <laughs> Let's edit this out so our prank war, so our prank war doesn't continue, so he doesn't have more fuel for our prank war. I love Emilio. I love, oh, love, too. love Emilio. We had him on the show, and uh, and he's he's such a bright light, and he's uh such a such a great guy. He's incredible. How is it working with with Emilio on Mayans? It's been amazing. I mean, Emilio is a legend in our industry, and I I've always looked up to him. I've always watched him on screen, and being able to work with him, I was like, this is so cool. And then meeting him. Him, he's just it became like a family like he makes everyone feel like family he makes everyone feel so welcome something that I always learned from Emilio is to treat everyone the same and treat everyone with kindness it doesn't matter who they are it doesn't matter what they do it doesn't matter who it is on set Emilio will give you a hug will be say hi to you with the biggest smile on his face like he really takes care of everyone and and having that environment on set with someone like that, as prominent as that in our industry, it should be a lesson for everyone. Yeah, no, that's that. I 100% agree mm -hmm. with you on on that. And uh, yeah, Emilio, he walked in. And it's like family. The first time mm -hmm. he walked in, right? He uh, <laughs> he he just made everyone smile. Took pictures with everyone. Signed Fred's uh, helmet. Oh God. <laughs> See, I, 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 just to show you how big of a, a fan uh, our, our director Fred is, he had he brought he bought a motorcycle helmet. Doesn't order motorcycles, <laughs> and he got it signed <laughs> by Emilio. <laughs> That's how big of a Emilio fan fred is well, buying, a, <laughs> buying a motorcycle helmet with no motorcycle to use it with <laughs> you know i i somebody comes respect. over to his house oh man you ride what bike do you have um about that <laughs> still working on that you know just no that's that's uh, uh that's how that's how Big of a fan, Fred is of, of Emilio, oh, and and the amazing. show too, and the show, and the show. I love that. Thank you, thank you for watching it. The 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 fandom of the show, how how is that? I mean, you you're going into season five. Yeah, now. season five. How has that been for you, uh, from like season one to mm. now season? You know, you're shooting season five now. Yeah, we're shooting currently at the moment shooting season five. So. It's been such a journey. This character has lived with me for five years now. And I feel like 
interestingly enough, as the character is growing as a woman, I'm also growing as a woman. So it's like we're growing interconnectedly hand in hand. And it's it's been so amazing to be a part of something so beautiful for also our culture. Like, I feel like as as one of the few shows that have lasted so long on air, being a full Hispanic cast is is such a blessing. And yeah, it's the environment is amazing. Everyone's like a family. We've been with each other for five years now. So we all love and hate each other yeah. <laughs> in the best way possible. <laughs> so it's it's been amazing. I'm so lucky to be a part of something like this. The fans are incredible. We did a panel at Comic-Con, the last Comic-Con in San Diego, and we we did Hall H, which was the biggest hall, and seeing everybody there so excited about the show and and so happy and it just it, it's amazing when we get to do stuff like that because you really see the audience in person and you see our viewers and you get to interact with them and and it's so beautiful to see like who's supporting us like who's watching the show like who's behind our, our viewership and it was amazing. Also during the pandemic, your your streaming uh, blew up as well, right? Like I, I feel like it the show got a second life. Yeah. Uh, during the pandemic, people were like binge watching all the all the seasons. That yeah. that that must be cool too. So like just get new fans. You're like, where where did, where did all this come from? For sure. Amelia yeah. was talking to me about yeah, that. Yeah, definitely. We did. We had like a huge spike in reviews during the pandemic and it was because of streaming because I feel like everybody was at home so everyone was like, yeah. let me watch now. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, because you can stream the, the show on Hulu and and we definitely did have a spike on reviews which was amazing. Now, you know, you, you're you the star of, of, of two big shows, right? And the difference, the major difference I mean, they're two different shows completely. <laughs> totally different. But what would you say is like the bi the biggest difference for you personally? Yeah, I, I would say that with Party of Five, playing Lucia, she was more like me. Like she was, it was very easy for me to be her because it was it was almost like me being me. And and the writers also wrote like that. They wrote in my language. They wrote, she, she was an activist. She was like always finding herself. She was always like wanting to help others. She I, I could relate with her a lot. But with Letty from, from Mayans, she's a little bit crazy. <laughs> so, yeah, she, she's a little bit crazy, a little, a little cuckoo. But, but I still love it. I think that uh, as an artist, that's always been something I've always wanted to do. I, I love playing roles that are completely outside of who I am. I love being able to step into somebody else's perspective and learn about how do they view life and, like, why. I think that as human beings, in our human experience, we are sort of like we can either be victims of our circumstances or we can be survivors of our, of our circumstances. And I think that when I get to play different characters, I learned so much about how our childhood shapes us, how our experiences shape us, and how we really are like survivors of our own environments. And and I feel like I've learned that so much with her because every crazy reckless decision that she makes is because of something that happened to her in her childhood that led yeah. her to that. And, and yeah, that's why I love what I do because it, it gives me so much perspective of the world and the people in it. What, what do you have more fun with? Doing a, a character that's more like you or doing a character that's... The, doing a crazy character. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely much more fun for me. What would you like to do more of, you know, coming into 2023? What kind of characters, what kind of you know, projects would you like to do more of? Yeah, so right now I'm actually working on producing my first film. Amazing, and congrats. And it's, it's based on a book, and it was written by actually one of my best friends, Andreina, and it's a beautiful story about mental health, and it's based on her real-life experiences, and I would love to do more of that. I would love to do more things that bring a meaningful, valuable message, that shine light on topics that aren't talked about as much in our industry, and I think this project means a lot to me. It's called Semicolon. And it just means a lot to me because of what the experiences that I went through and how that sort of gave me like a second meaning of life. And that's what happened to her as well. And she writes it so beautifully in this book. So I'm working on turning it into a film and it's my first time producing. So it's been insane. <laughs> it's been pretty nuts, but I'm here. I'm that's alive so cool. and I'm learning uh, as I go. And yeah, I'm, I'm very happy and proud to be able to to do this. And, and I want to do more things like that. Mental health and, and well-being and wellness and just things that are meaningful and valuable, but still through fun art and expression. Right. right. A creative way to mm -hmm. uh, to send out, you know, special messages out there. Mm -hmm. I feel like legacy is, is something very important to you. It is. Legacy has been so important to me always. I feel like 
I I love what I do and I love that I'm able to have a platform and I, I love that I'm able to like I I I made my dreams come true. I really did. Like if I look at myself when I was seven, when I was 12, when I was 15, and I made those like decisions of what I was doing and I look at myself now, like I definitely can say that 12 year old me would be proud and I'm, I'm happy to say that. But I think the most important thing at the end of the day is like when I'm gone, what am I leaving behind? And I want to be able to leave behind a legacy of what positive changes did I make in the world through my art, through my activism, through my work here on this earth. Like when I leave, I want to be able to leave a legacy of truth, a legacy of strength, a legacy of kindness, a legacy of love. Like I want people to be able to look at the things that I did and say like, I, I brought a smile to someone's face or I helped change this or I helped restructure this system or that, that's kind of like what I want to do. I want to like reshape and restruct and like make things shake up a little bit and, and make them better. And you're so, you know, and you're still so young, yeah. you know. The fact that you're you're already thinking about about the legacy that, that you'll leave behind uh, just shows the the amount um, of 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 love that you have uh, for you. everything that you do, uh, and and the people that that are around you, and the people that follow you, and the message that you want to leave. I think that's 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 amazing. Thank you. Um, and now before you go. Mm -hmm. We have Rapid Fire. Ooh, I like this. <laughs> with Emily Tosta. Okay, I'm nervous. Ooh, this is a good one. Sao Gigante or Sao Chiquito? Oh my God, this is crazy. This is crazy. How you do me like this? This is not going to be no Rapid Fire. <laughs> this is you putting me through the fire. <laughs> Man, I'm gonna go with Sabalo Gigante because that's the iconic. Like it came from it. It's iconic. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I See. can't disrespect our little Francisco <laughs> like that. <laughs> we did our research. That question was already in here prior to, to us sitting He's down. Lying to you guys. <laughs> favorite, favorite Latino food dish. Ooh, arepas y mango. Mm. Mango. What's mango? Mango is Dominican. So it's uh, our typical Dominican breakfast. So, so what's what's in mango? So it's plantains. It's mashed plantains. So you know how like Americans have mashed potatoes. Us, it's plantains mashed Ooh, with like that's, olive that's, oil. That's... And then we do it with like fried onions, like onions fried in vinegar. So you have like that little vinegar to Ooh. the onions. We do it with salami, which I don't eat meat anymore, but we do it with salami. And then queso frito, so fried cheese. <sighs> that sounds amazing. Yeah, it's delicious. Do you like chilaquiles? Yes, I do. Love them. That's that's my. It's, I've grown into loving chilaquiles recently. Yeah. In like my my adult life, like in the last year, actually. Have you found like a few spots that you like that they make them yummy? <sighs> I'll share some with you later. Okay, you have to. I, I got a, I'm a foodie, I got a, I got a so list. Yeah, to. yeah, foodies. You know, we gotta <laughs> we gotta stick together. Yeah. Best song to play at a party. Um, party by Bad Bunny. <laughs> party, 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 party. Can I just say, I went to the Bad Bunny concert two nights in a row. What? Best experience of my life. Okay, we can keep going now. I just had to get that out there. <laughs> what night was better? The last night? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I will say. That was the night yeah. that he brought everybody, yeah, right? Yeah, the night that he brought everybody. Mm -hmm. Evie Queen, La Caballota. Oh, my God. La Caballota. Iconic. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Best singer of all time. Oh, wow. Of all time. That's a tough one. I don't think I've ever sat down to think about the best singer of all time. I'm going to go with, this might be a little bit of a controversial answer, but I'm going to say it. Michael Jackson. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. uh, you know it's 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 fairly popular, right? We've heard Michael. Yeah. yeah? Okay. Little, little Michael or Big Michael? Oh. Little Michael or Big Michael? Fred, I'm making the questions up. Huh? <laughs> Fred comes over here, grabs a mic, joins us. <laughs> little Michael or Big Michael? <laughs> <laughs> Little Michael. <laughs> Salsa or merengue? Ooh, merengue. Merengue or reggaeton? Reggaeton. That was so quick. I didn't even <laughs> let you get that question out. I didn't even finish. <laughs> you didn't even finish. <laughs> merengue or re reggaeton? reggaeton. <laughs> she, was, she was looking you know, for a oh, buzzer. There's no, there's no buzzer there, Emily. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Lastly, what's a nickname of yours that no one really knows about? Emilita. 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 Emilita, Every, I love that. Like, people in Dominican Republic call me that. Like, some of my family members call me that, and no one in America has ever heard that, ever. <laughs> I love that. Emilita. Well, Emilita, <laughs> we want to thank you so much for coming to Mondo and Friends. This is your house, you know, whenever you want to come by. You. And bring some mango. Yes, and arepas. <laughs> this is this is your your casa. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for holding such a beautiful space for so many of us. I appreciate it. Thank you. It Thank you lovely. so much. Thank you so much, Emily Tosta. <laughs> Give it up for Emily, everybody. Thank you. And thank you so much for watching and listening to Mondo and Friends presented by Verizon.